The Lord be with you. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Junction City, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Timothy Roser, and on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost, we will once again follow the order of morning prayer. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Oh, come, let us worship him. Psalm 119, beginning at verse 81. My soul longs for your salvation. I hope in your word. My eyes long for your promise. I ask, when will you comfort me? For I have become like a wineskin in the smoke, yet I have not forgotten your statutes. How long must your servant endure? When will you judge those who persecute me? The insolent have dug pitfalls for me. They do not live according to your law. All your commandments are sure. They persecute me with falsehood. Help me. They have almost made an end of me on earth, but I have not forsaken your precepts. In your steadfast love, give me life, that I may keep the testimonies of your mouth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our office hymn is number 655 in Lutheran service book, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Curb those who by deceit or sword would wrest the kingdom from your Son and bring to naught all he has done. Lord Jesus Christ, your power make known, for you are Lord of lords alone. Defend your holy church that we may sing your praise eternally. O oh, comforter of priceless worth, send peace and unity on earth. Support us in our final strife and lead us out of death to life. The epistle reading appointed for this day is from the letter to the Hebrews, chapters 11 and 12. By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites, and gave directions concerning his bones. 
By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the approach, reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Jesus said, I came to cast fire on the earth and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, in one house, there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the appointed Old Testament reading from Jeremiah, chapter 23. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, it shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, no disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold, the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal? Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord, is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. This is the word of the Lord. A hammer. That's not usually the way we think of the word of God. We may see it as a guidebook for life or a collection of sayings that bring comfort in troubled times. But a hammer? That sounds harsh. But God does wield his word as a hammer. For you and I are in danger. 
No, not the danger of a mass shooting or a terrorist attack, though those may lurk out there somewhere. No, not the danger of those who try to disgrace the church, persecute us, or even try to take away our freedom of religion. God wields his word as a hammer against a danger that is greater still, a danger that comes from within. You and I are surrounded by false prophets and false teachers, those who would lead us away from the pure teachings of God's word. These are the voices who speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, it shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his heart, they say, no disaster shall come upon you. Though they claim to be speaking for God, they are in fact only speaking for themselves. Mind you, such dangers are nothing new to the people of God. In the days of the prophet Jeremiah, the people faced this sort of wolves in sheep's clothing. False prophets turn religion into empty formalism, lip service to God, rules for right living, works righteousness. They taught people to go through the motions of faithful worship, and then they joined them as they went on on that same day to worship pagan gods. What false teachers today am I talking about? Well, of course, there are those who claim to be Christians and are really outside the Christian church. Among these are the Mormons, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, as they call themselves, who add the Book of Mormon to complete what God taught in the Bible. Then there are Jehovah's Witnesses, who have written, rewritten the Bible to fit their own teachings. But even more dangerous than these are those false prophets that arise within the Christian Church. These teachers pick and choose from God's word, looking for the most significant, the most appealing, the least offensive teachings they can find. They'll tone down and repackage the word to make it user-friendly, throwing out what people might not like. So, contrary to scripture, some ordain women to the pastoral ministry because the Bible's way of doing things is not inclusive enough for today's world. Contrary to scripture, some allow anyone and everyone to come to the Lord's table because close communion practices are too narrow-minded. Contrary to scripture, some embrace homosexuality as legitimate alternative lifestyle because homo calling homosexuality a sin is not a loving thing to do. Is it really all that bad to make such adjustments for our modern world? One Sunday, a pastor preached on the dangers of sin. Afterwards, one of his members came to talk to him. The man was troubled that the pastor had spoken so plainly and so openly about sin. He said, couldn't we call it human nature or, or human weakness or frailty? Sin sounds so nasty. The pastor went to a cabinet and pulled out a bottle marked poison. He says, is this what you want me to do, he said? Change the label? Suppose I take off the word poison and replace it with peppermint. Do you see what would happen? The milder you make the label, the more dangerous you make the poison. So how do you know when you're dealing with a false prophet? Well, thankfully, God exposes false prophets around us with his word. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word, or who has paid attention to his word and listened? When teachers of the word neglect, deny, or rewrite God's word, that makes God angry. <clears throat> with his anger comes judgment. Behold, the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. These prophets and preachers who do not faithfully speak the word of the Lord were not sent by God, no matter what they may claim. I did not send the prophets, says the Lord, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. If they had kept to the words of the Lord, they would have been doing their job, condemning sin and turning people from their sinful ways through the preaching of God's law and bringing them comfort and the forgiveness of sins through God's gracious gospel. Yet false preachers and their hearers seem to think God won't notice Somehow people think they can make up their own set of beliefs, basically invent their own religion, and God won't care. With so much going on around us, 
you and I are regularly tempted into practicing cafeteria Christianity. We start to think we can pick and choose what we want to believe and do, what commandments we want to keep, how often we want to go to church services, and we can safely ignore the rest. People, God knows what you're up to. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? God knows everything we do, everything we say, everything we think, everything we feel. God is well aware of the false preachers, too. I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. God's heard it, and he's fed up with it. How long shall there be lies in the hearts of the people who prophesy lies? and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name and their dream by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. So what is God going to do about it? He points us to his word. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream. But let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. God's word is to be spoken faithfully. Smashing us when we try to hide our sinful ways from God. Crushing us when we think we can have our religion on our own terms. God's word exposes all sin. The sin of this sinful world, the sin of the false prophets, and our own daily sin. He exposes it for what it is. A violation of God's law that damns us to hell. But wait, isn't God loving? Why will he break us in pieces? It's true. The Lord's word delivers a crushing law, condemning us sinners as sinners in the hands of an angry God. But the Lord's word also tells us how God let that same hammer fall on another who took the punishment of our sin for us. That's right. As the blows of the whips raged across his back, as the nails pierced his hands and his feet, as his torn body was lifted up on the cross to suffer and die, the full weight and punishment of God's law descended on Jesus. The hammer of God that should have fallen on us fell on him, crushing Jesus instead of crushing us. God the Father then took that payment made in Jesus' blood and credited that payment to our account. In the suffering and death of Jesus, the debt of the whole world has been paid in full. To mark that payment received, God the Father raised his son from the dead. He brought back to life the one broken on the cross. Because Jesus now lives, you and I have God's promise of life unending. The hammer of God's word is therefore a precious hammer. It smashes so that God may rebuild and restore. It breaks apart the deceits and deceptions of others so that the pure good news of forgiveness may come through. It bursts upon our sinful lives and busts them up so that God can come in and create new lives in us through faith in Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Beware the hammer of God. It destroys false prophets and crushes proud sinners. But rejoice in the hammer of God's word for it clears the way to change lives as we are led to trust in the Jesus who was crushed for us. The hammer of God's word shatters our sinful lives that our loving God may forge new lives in us, lives of faith in Jesus Christ, lives that will live forever. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Yes, it is. Thanks be to God. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. 
He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, cleanse and defend your church by the sacrifice of Christ. United with him in holy baptism, give us grace to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of his redeeming work and daily follow in his way. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Gracious God, our fathers in the faith gave a good confession of your truth before the powers of this world. In the spirit of Jeremiah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and Moses, strengthen our hearts in days of division to confess in our words and lives the glory of your name. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord of hosts, you inspired your servant Jeremiah to proclaim your word amid the lies of the false prophets. Arm your servants in our day with the power of your Holy Spirit to contradict the lies of the enemy and build up your church upon the eternal foundation of your word. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, you settle the solitary in families in order to nurture their faith and train them in righteousness. Bless and strengthen parents to bring up their children to resist temptation and to endure all things for the sake of your name. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God Almighty, behold our nation and all those in authority in your mercy and replenish them by your grace, that all who receive the sword would bear it according to your word, always inclining to your will and walking in your way. Grant that we might lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, grant healing to the sick, strength to the weak, Endurance to bear up under trial, patience to await his deliverance, and peace at the last. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, your Son promises division even as he promises salvation. Inspire our hearts to prize our baptism and the communion of the saints above all other relations in this world, even as we fervently pray and strive for the salvation of those we know and love. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory ever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. 
Amen. The Lord be with you.